All right, you guys, welcome back to That's So Fringy Podcast. I'm Rick. And I'm Kristen. And we are here with one of our new friends from Unfiltered Rise Podcast, Heidi Love. Hi, Heidi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm Heidi Love from the Unfiltered Rise. Happy to be here and nice to meet you guys. It's so nice to meet you. You know, we heard you on a couple of different podcasts and um, I actually have a family member that mentioned you as well and, and said that you're going around and uh, just just mm-hmm. mentioning to people what Mormonism is from an insider's perspective. And that's what you have. But before we get into this episode, what I wanted to do is talk about the broader scope of this series that we're about to do, which is on the world religions and the cults. And so um, we're not going to dabble in all of them, obviously, that we'd be doing this series forever. Um, um, but th- the problem is, um, th- you know, you don't know what to believe until you know what what is all out there. How do you attach yourself to one thing? And, and a lot of Christians or a lot of people say um, that, you know, wh- I've I've just grown up in this. So this is what I know, you know, and in, in my opinion, that's not really good enough. You have to you have to go outside the box. You have to get outside the family and really think for yourself. That's what it is to grow up and, and, and become an adult, right? And, but when we do that, then we get really confused because we have our own way of life. We have our own way of doing things and, and we know our family and then the world becomes really confusing. And uh, so what we want to do with this series is try to get rid of some of that confusion and, and, and really help people to dial in what it is they believe. Even if you are a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim or whatever you are, we respect all of that. Even though we do say that we're Christians and that's what, that's what we stand on. Uh, that doesn't mean that, that we don't, we don't, we don't want to come into this series and say, we're going to bash all of you other people out there that believe all those things. That's definitely not what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is, however, bring a light of truth onto what all of these things really are and, and, and how they really perform in the world. And so as we do these deep dives, you guys will learn hopefully a lot more about these things and be able to make better well-informed decisions with your life. So with that, we're going to get into this particular episode, which is with Heidi. Thanks for hanging with us, Heidi, as I introduced that series. But we just wanted to get into Mormonism. And you have a very insider perspective that we're super interested in. (laughs) And uh, so we wanted to just let you have the floor. You have your own podcast, so you've done this before. We're just going to let you do your thing. Awesome. Well, I'm so happy to be here again, like I said, and I like to spread my word out there. Um, a lot of people also get kind of frustrated with me because the things I touch on are sacred to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I want people to know for 34 years, this was extremely sacred to me. I was a Mormon and I grew up in the Mormon church and I was born into this church and my DNA says I'm a Mormon settler and like, <laughs> I can't get away from it. Right. I live in Utah. Yeah. Um, but the one thing I do want to mention is the reason why I go into certain things that people might um, get upset with and even the big Mormon podcasts don't do because they say, oh, well, it's sacred, like I said. Well, the problem with that is, is secrets keep people sick. Mm-hmm. And this was a secret that I kept. And when I got out and I found out the reality of this secret, it damaged me, right? And so that's sure. why I share. Be, not because I'm trying to hurt anybody else. And I, I, my family, a lot are still Mormon. My husband's family is still Mormon. We love people. The people mm-hmm. isn't the problem, right? right. It's the religion. Sure. And, and you so, can have these conversations without, you know, without degrading or tearing people down as long as you're talking about systems. And I like talking to people that have first person type of um, experience because now we're not just speculating or, or, or talking about people in general. We're talking about systems. And so right. we'll let you talk about those systems. So, like I said, I just want to briefly touch on that because a lot of people get really mad when they see that I'm going to expose their temple garments. I'm going to expose their temple wear. I'm going to expose secret ceremonial things. And the problem with it is, like I said, if the Mormons came out tomorrow and said, hey, we're not Christian. We believe in this and we're Masonic and we believe blah, blah, blah. I would probably shut up. Because I was lied to. You can't lie to people. Like, if you want to be a Mason, okay, 
you go and pledge to a Masonic temple and you know what you're doing. You know, you may not know every level, but you have a general understanding that this is a Mason. You're going to be a Mason now, right? Sure. Or a Scientologist or, and, and that's okay. If whatever people want to do, even if you want to be, I don't care an occultist. Like I really don't care what people want to choose. I hope that they'll choose mm -hmm. the light in Christ, but we can't force it. Right. So right. my thing is, is like this whole situation is they lied to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So nothing better than a woman scorned. So with yeah. that, <laughs> yeah, this is I what will, you get. Right? This is what you get when you uh, are a Mormon and you scorn a woman, right? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm gonna bump into something that I a lot of people don't really think of when they think of Mormonism, and most people do not share my view on this. And I bring up Abraxas because he's gonna be divinely important along with the occult and John D. I do not believe like most people do about Joseph Smith that he was high on mushrooms or any wild thing like that. I actually believe a whole nother thing. So quickly I just want to touch on Abraxas and have you guys heard of him before, the chicken snake god? I've heard a little bit. I, I, I'll I've be only honest, I haven't name. done a deep dive. Yeah, You're but good. I've yeah. definitely heard the name. So Abraxas is a really Gnostic um, god. He is a solar god as represented with the shield and the whip. He is considered, he also a lot of times is shown on a chariot. And that's really indicative of a solar god. He is mentioned mm -hmm. in the Gospel of the Egyptians and also by like, you know, St. Jerome, Uranus, uh, Basil Basilides mentions him a lot. And um, his name is uh, 365 in Gematria, which means everything and a, a totality, right? And so all of this is important in a minute. Just kind of put it in your back pocket because this is going to become extremely important to me. Um, so it's not something that was just kind of created. He is actually like a God and I will just kind of touch on that really quick. So that's him. And this is why he's important. So this is an excerpt from a book um, that I highly recommend. And Lucy Mack Smith was Joseph Smith's mother. Mm. And um, in early Mormonism and the magical world view, can you guys still see me? Cause I can't see you, mm -hmm. but yep. if you can see me. Okay. So this is D Michael mm -hmm. Quinn's book and it's a really good book. Um, it's about basically the occultist part of Mormonism. He actually was a real Mormon still when he wrote it. And mm -hmm. <laughs> he only got excommunicated because he was gay, not because of what oh. he said. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. <laughs> he became a not Mormon <laughs> because of this, but also this book is like, so important. So it goes into all of the folk magic that we're going to get into and some excerpts. And I bring a lot of receipts because the stuff I talk about is really weird. And so this is why I'm giving you like a background of where to find some things. So Lucy sure. Mack Smith wrote her own biography as well as in this early Mormonism book. It's in here. And this little excerpt says, let not my reader suppose that because I shall pursue another topic for a season that we stopped our labor and went about trying to win the faculty of a brack, drawing mm. magic circles to soothsaying or the neglect of all kinds of business. Okay. That's, that's in itself right there. A brack, house of a brack, a braxis, abracadabra. It all goes together. I don't care if you want to worship that or whatever. You're a Gnostic. You're already well uh, informed about Abraxas is a very Gnostic uh, God, but yeah. many people call it the God of all gods. And it becomes extremely important when we get into channeling here in a bit. Hmm. So this is a rendition of what Joseph Smith's dad and Joseph Smith's um, himself, Joseph Smith Jr. and Sr. were doing with a neighbor. They were known as a treasure um, hunting family. They uh -huh. were known as healers. They, the mother was actually the first people to be born here. That was her family was from Scotland. So this is all going to play into this really importantly here in a bit. But sure. um, again, you know, these <laughs> symbols, sigils, all of this was a rendition from a neighbor that actually had to write an affidavit and we'll explain why here soon. So this is why, because Joseph Smith was a glass looker and a treasure hunter to the point where he sucked so bad. <laughs> like normally <laughs> this is like um, jaywalking. Okay. No big deal. But he sucked so much that they literally took him to court. 
And so it's amazing for me because he has a whole bunch of affidavits that explain exactly what his family was doing, exactly what they were up to. Oh, yeah. Hard for this church to refute at this point. Um, It's a minor thing that he got in trouble for and just had a fee. Also, he was a Mason and got out of it and didn't really get in trouble. But it's important for me because we're going to get into this with the Smith family magical relics. Mm -hmm. So the occult beginnings of this is, is wonderful. Also, the church tried to get rid of this. The church did not. When I grew up in the church, this was not a thing. Okay. Okay. I'll tell you, let me get to, um, we'll just zoom in on this stone here. This is a treasure bag and this stone, the brown stone to the right corner, Mm -hmm. that is his favorite stone. And it becomes really important. The Mars dagger at the bottom has Adonai on it. It's like a sigil knife, including like, if you know anything about the occult and the magical Mm -hmm. realm, they have a chalice, they have a knife or a dagger, they have these things. So this is very occult in nature. They will Mm -hmm. lie and say, this isn't really Joseph's, this is his brother's, because they died together, and then the things were divided up that were on them, okay? However, let me give you a little thing about his brother, Hiram, like Hiram Abiff, not not a coincidence at all. (laughs) Um, Yeah, who names their kid Hiram, if that's not what they're, yeah. It's like, no, we didn't want to, just something They're not Masons at all. What? Yeah. Yeah. So they said, oh, no, no, it's his. And here's the problem with it. Hiram was quiet. He was the studious one. They also say that these people were stupid farm people. Um, Mm -hmm. No, Hiram went to Dartmouth. It was a college Mm -hmm. inside of Dartmouth called the Indian College. But like, uh, come on now. (laughs) These are not just silly little dirt boys. Okay, this is no. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I grew up in the church, there was nothing about a stone. I'm almost 50, just to put that in there so you guys can understand, like, when I grew up, I'm 48 this year. And they never said anything to us, okay? No magic hat, no stone, none of that. So this Mm. is, this was a shock for me growing up. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, this was um, the treasure bag. And this is wonderful because guess what? A private owner owns this and he won't release it and he won't get rid of it. So the church can't destroy it. So it's. Oh, nice. (laughs) (laughs) And so these sigils are actually what led me to my little conjecture. So those three sigils, I'll go back really quick. We're in the bag. There's three of them total. This colorful drawing on the bottom is just like a decoding of one of them. Um, Mm -hmm. but there were these sigils in this bag with a Mars knife and a seer stone and all this weird stuff. So not Mm. weird at all. Right. Cause he's completely a Christian. Do you feel Christianity coming through at this point? Yeah. It's (laughs) really coming through. Glaringly. Yes. Right. (laughs) We're feeling the spirit. Not at all. Uh, (laughs) So it gets even better. Some spirit spirits. We'll say we see spirit spirit stuff for sure. That's right. This is the decoding of all this. And I'm just going to zoom it in for the bottom part. Like people can look at this later, but where is it coming from? Right. The Magus Mm -hmm. Francis Barrett. Okay. The discoveries of witchcraft by Reginald Scott, uh, occult sciences by Ebenezer Sibley. And the last one I cannot read because the little sharing thing is on there. Let's see if I can shut this. Hold on. Maybe. The little sharing tag is oh, yeah, right I see over that. it. <laughs> so anyway, the last one's not important. Slung the me. Magus is the most important and the occult mm-hmm. sense is with Sibley. So th- it doesn't matter. This is called the holiness to the Lord parchment. And you can kind of uh-huh. see on here hmm. that ju- Jubla dance right there, that guardian in the middle, that little mm-hmm. weird drawing. Yep. So Jubla dance is really important. So just put that also in your back pocket. Okay. For later, because it's important. So this says holiness of the Lord on top of it. So does the LDS temple. If you want to find oh, a picture someday. Interesting. Uh, yes, it's right on top of the top of the doors. And so mm. um, there's just a coincidence. Occultic, yeah. Occultic <laughs> drawings, right? Like you can see all yeah. of this here. So we won't go into all of them, but this is the original, what it really looks like if it's not colored in to help people see, because it's really old and it's messed up. And these are the only mm-hmm. pictures of it. So mm-hmm. um, again, another photo of it, just so that people can kind of see it deciphered, but it's kind of weird still, because there's some that are sideways and whatever. So, but people can look at this, you know, on their own. Yeah. 
see this wheel? Doesn't that look like what they were drawing outside? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that picture of them drawing on the ground. Yeah, that looks uh -huh, like that yeah. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. This is the second one. This is the second parchment. This is called the Jehovah, Jehovah, Jehovah parchment. Remember how I told you to keep in mind Jubladance? This is the Jubladance symbol. These mm -hmm. are calling down for specific angels. And when I got out of Mormonism, you know how you said when you become your own person and you start studying things on your own, blah, 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 that part when you yeah, first yeah. introduced hugely yep. important for my life um mm -hmm. so i got out and i started wondering just what i had done because i was trying to break off demonic strongholds i did this by accident mm -hmm. i wasn't a podcaster i wasn't doing it for that reason i simply was a woman trying to get a lot of weird stuff out of my life that's it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was all i was up to i wasn't trying to share with anyone i had no friends to share this with i live in utah everyone is mormon Nobody wants to talk to Heidi about this. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> back then, now everybody does, but that's fine. But <laughs> I did this yeah. studying before, before, and I wondered, well, what is, what is this? So I reversed, um, took this little clip and I put it into Google, right? Like the image thing. And then I kept going and I'll get back to that, but just, just remember that part. I don't know if I should say it now. Maybe I should just say it now. All right. So I put it in and the only other time Jubla dance comes up ever on the whole entire internet was once and it was John D. And I was like, who's John D? Cause I didn't know. I'm just a nurse and a mom. I had yeah. no idea who the crap it was. Like, honestly, I, I wasn't into occult stuff. Like I'm not supposed mm -hmm. to read weird things like that. So I'm like, who, who is this? So I went, I'm, that's my second topic that I really do deep dives on for the most part. It's like Mormonism and John D. Most people that know me mm -hmm. know I do those. And that's because I had to learn a whole bunch about him because I was like, why, why is John D the occultist weird guy channeling angels, um, writing mm -hmm. things the same as Joseph Smith? the mm -hmm. guy i believed in forever right like this is a little concerning for me as yeah it seems a little suspicious i might yeah. want to look into this <laughs> yeah well and i'm trying to break off strongholds in my life so i'm like uh oh yeah. oh is that a demon you know like oh right. what's happening so the more i learned about john d i don't know do you guys know the original like story about joseph smith and how he found mormonism I know a little important. bit about it, but you should probably it. go through yeah. it just for this sure. series, if you don't yes. mind. No, not at all. I planned on it. I just kind of jump in with this part because it's like super interesting and cool. But yeah. Um, so J Joseph Smith went out into a grove of trees. This is what we're told, by the way. There's four accounts of this. They're all different, and um, they hide. <laughs> Makes them. it super easy. <laughs> Makes it yeah. super easy to understand. Right. And they hide them all except for one. And that is that he was 14 and he went out and it says, if you want to learn something, call upon the Lord and pray about it and he'll give you an answer. So that's in the Bible. So he did that. And then he was like, I was overtaken by a spirit and I woke up after I passed out and, and God, the father and the son were standing in front of me. Okay. Well, mm. that sounds really familiar to somebody else. If you know the story of Muhammad. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Muhammad likes to pass out too. And Gabriel comes to him and tells him things too. But um, all of these go back to the original channeler who was John D and John mm. D was channeling all these entities, which it's interesting to me of this. Like I said, I was doing this to get occult things off of me. And then mm -hmm. I come to find out, okay, let's see. I mentioned Muhammad. What did he do? He passes out. He tells these things. They don't write them down. They memorize them because they were a non-written uh, people. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they didn't write them down till he died. But after they did, at some point, right, it becomes what? A religion. So channeling yep. angels writes it down. Religion. All right. Crowley. Crowley goes... And he talks to Awas mm -hmm. and Awas tells him, you know what? You should write this down. And he writes the book of the law and it becomes what? Thelema, a religion. Joseph Smith channels. He gets told things and they say, you're going to find these golden plates and you're going to write all this stuff down and you're going to, you know, translate these plates and then it's going to be a religion. So he does that too. <laughs> Um, Scientology's fun too. Jack Parsons, L. Ron mm -hmm. Hubbard, they're out doing yep. some weird stuff and they write it all down. It becomes a religion. But at the end of all of these things that I've told you guys, there's always a sacrifice. With John mm -hmm. D, 
they had to swap wives. At, at this point, you pretty much know you're not talking to God anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because God can yeah. see everything. So why does he care if he sees you with somebody else? Like he's mm-hmm. thinking, well, that's stupid. And so right. also again, not tricking his, him. Yeah. No. <laughs> and he's also not interested. He could watch anybody do it. Like why? <laughs> he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, I mean, yeah, he's not going to be like, hey, this would be a really fun idea. Let's switch it up. So, at that point, obviously, they knew something wasn't right. Also, John D., fun fact, had to raise Edward Kelly's kid for the rest of his life. Just fun fact. Um, oh, really? Oh, yeah. That was a very sitch. interesting fun fact, by the way. <laughs> fun fact. And so, Joseph Smith and Muhammad, what happens? They put in polygamy into this, right? And mm-hmm. so, again, sex, sexual sin. Um, mm-hmm. L. Ron Hubbard, I don't even want to start about what was happening in the desert about sexual mm-hmm. sin. Because it was a nasty boat. business. Oh, yeah. It's all bad. It's it's mm-hmm. not a... Mm-mm. And so, obviously, again, sexual sin. Oh, Crowley, he got kicked out of countries for his sexual sins. Right. So, like, yep. we don't have to make it up. Yep. It's disgusting. So, I mean, he's in, he thinks there's a whole universe in your butt. So... yeah. People, you can look about that. I uh, I don't go too far into Crowley because Crowley, ultimately, if you think that Crowley is where the occult begins, you're lost. It's John D. Mm-hmm. And before him, yeah. there's actually um, Al Kindi, who was before him. So it, oh, yeah. it's this has been going on for new. thousands of yeah. years. Mm-hmm. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing right? new under the sun. So I became kind of a weird occultic christian which isn't normal that's a weird thing mm-hmm. <laughs> so so then it you're is? like yeah then you're looked oh, at okay. really weird because people are like why are you studying this weird crap like you are really off the rails lady and yeah. i'm like well yeah but it all goes into the same thing and even my mm-hmm. mom was like oh my gosh don't have that book in your house like i i, I agree <laughs> i don't buy Crowley's yeah. books yeah right um, i want to touch on that really quick if you don't mind <laughs> yeah and that's yeah. just because while we're going through this uh series uh, this is the number one thing that i that i knew was probably going to come up is why are we researching all of this stuff when when we shouldn't we're told we shouldn't be dabbling in the occult we Mm -hmm. shouldn't be doing this shouldn't be doing that and i think it's a good point of fact to make sure that people realize that we're not actually dabbling in the occult we're researching about the occult Mm -hmm. and those are two separate things you're bringing light like it says in the Bible, right? We're supposed to shed light on those things that are abhorrent. We're not supposed to be a part of it, but we are supposed mm-hmm. to expose it. We are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And well, do and I Paul think says, that, I, yeah, not everybody should do it. I mean, I don't yeah. think that um, mentally, if you can't handle this, like obviously this is why we're speaking out so that people can get the like highlights and not have to have their brain full of like, uh yeah. okay if you read the book of the cow you might be messed up for a minute mess me <laughs> yeah. up for a minute you know i'm like okay no my mom does never need to know about the book of the cow like yeah. but <laughs> i did because i'm studying weird things so i'm like oh got it yeah and you it, know? it brings you to conclusions that you need to go th- you need to go through these steps to know that this stuff is wrong and mm-hmm. you can also make the connections you know if you don't know if you didn't know that those sigils or those symbols were known. connected to mm-hmm. the cult occult then you couldn't make the connection to what is as you know as you knew it mormonism yes. and so now you're going how how are these things compatible and right. so that's the trick right is don't look into these other things because you might see some similarities that right. we, us that are hiding them from you don't want you to see mm-hmm. well and we're doing it because we are trying to expose right we're not mm-hmm. like trying yeah, to yeah, learn yeah. how to create magic or we're not doing treasure spells or whatever they're doing in the occult to it's all about intention they're right sure. about that like the occult yes. practice yeah. of intention is true but it's yep. it's all about what you're doing and so even damien eccles has like whole channel on occult stuff and what does he talk about intention all day long mm-hmm. so yep. again if you're going to study if you are called to study you will know it sucked because i was like what i am not gonna study (laughs) the book of the law this is disgusting you know like i Mm -hmm. don't need to know all the things in here or whatever but like i i did need to know quite a bit of it and i would have never ever ever known about this occult thing and how i'm gonna tie this all together for you in a pretty package with john d 
because mm. nobody has talked about it really except one other guy. And so, yeah. and it was mm. years and years ago about Mormonism anyway, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and most people just think, oh, Mormons are just weird Christians. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> yeah. And guess what? They don't know it. That's the sad part. The that sad is the sad part. part. Yeah, that's why I'm pissed off. That's why I talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the average Mormon, you know, that, that you might know walking down a, a Utah street, or I grew up, you know, a, a close to a lot of Mormons, and it, it, the average Mormon family is not the problem. This mm-hmm. is not what we're talking about. And a lot of them you, that I've met and talked to, they've they've told me, we think we're Christians, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, that's great. And I, I'm glad not. that you guys... <laughs> You guys are trying to use that as a foundation, but but when the things that you're doing or the things that the church is doing behind closed doors at a level that is beyond you, because we all know that there's these levels Definitely. that are beyond your everyday church, you know, going and comings from normal Sunday activities and Wednesday night activities and those type of things. There's these other levels, and those these are the levels that we're talking about. And this kept me from Christ. Like, how many Mm. Mormons is there out there or Muslims or other people that maybe would come to Christ if this was shed? And, like, I'm not saying this is going to change a really devout Mormon spirit right now, but maybe it would plant the seed like my mother did for me. And Mm. the whole reason why I got out is because of my husband and my mom and them planting seeds and showing me little truths. I would have never got out on my own, Mm. not ever. I lost my whole family um, Mm. except my mom. And my, I have my husband, but that's our family. Like I lost all my extended family, all my great uncles, all aunts, Mm. everybody, all cousins, everybody, nobody talks to me. I lost Mm. my grandma who was like integral in my life because I had a really hard life. And she saved me basically from that life. When I was about 12, I was a ward of the courts and had to be Mm. um, given to somebody. So I went with my grandma and she was extensively into Mormonism and hence my journey was, Mm -hmm. you know, magnified there. I was grown up in it, but my parents were Jack Mormons and that's Mm -hmm. like the Catholics that go at Eastern Christmas basically. Mm -hmm. And they smoked and drank and did the things, but, um, you know, I, I had this really weird life. I had this really Mormon grandma and my grandpa that was married to her was a biker in the one percenters. (laughs) So it's, yeah. And then my dad was in prison. (laughs) So I had this really crazy life and by all accounts, like, I don't know if you know what the ACEs score is, but I'm a mental health nurse as well. And the ACEs score is like your trauma measurement from when you're a kid. And there's only Mm -hmm. 10 questions. It's like, Did you see anybody beat each other? You know, were you beaten? Did your parents go to prison? Blah, blah, blah. Well, mine's a 10 out of 10. And um, put me down for 10. Put me down for 10. And I'm like, that's not a good thing. (laughs) 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 To get get a perfect score is bad. And as a mental health nurse, yeah, I can tell you, like, um, most people that have even a five are really messed up. Like Uh horribly, horribly so. And I give God all the glory. And so, of course, after I got saved, really, why wouldn't I want to share this? Right. Uh Like, Uh that's the whole point. And so for me, like I'm laying bare every piece of my life and also all the things that I messed up on, because like, Mm -hmm. obviously, I followed a false religion and I was kind of a dick when I was a Mormon. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and humility is the beginning of. (laughs) of all of this right humility is the baseline that's what we have to do and 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 when you deal with mental health i'm sure you find that a lot of that is the baseline for getting any help or anything like that is humility finding your your bottom and saying okay this is where now i need to start rebuilding and so that's hopefully hopefully somebody will find this podcast and say i'm trying to rebuild my life mormonism was part of my past but you know do i want to be part of my future and and Mm -hmm. so enlighten us yes. do do they want do they want to <laughs> no and i'll show you guys why and like i said i mean so embarrassment aside i just don't really care i i'm kind mm-hmm. of like i'll lay it all bare if it'll bring one person to christ like mm-hmm. yeah. so that's okay with me you know and i i don't feel bad about my circumstance because the whole reason why i'm unfiltered is unfiltered you get it but rise is rise above i'm yeah. not yeah. a victim mentality person i i I should be on a corner selling my body somewhere for some drugs. Like I'm not, Mm -hmm. and you can do it. I mean, I was married at 17 and (laughs) 
I have six kids and I still went yeah. to school. I still finished everything. I still worked really hard and you, you can do hard things. You can, you can, yep. God will be there for you, you know? And yep. so that's my, my hope in, in sharing all this. So, um, like I said about these parchments, sorry, we got off on a tangent there. That's all good. <laughs> um, Joseph Smith senior and Joseph Smith jr. Um, were probably the owners, but they were inherited, as I mentioned to Hiram's family after their death in 1844. So they were martyred. I don't know if you guys know that. Mm -mm. Um, after he had the vision and got the calling from, you know, God, the father and the son of the new, another guy coming. And it was a white, I'm not kidding, a white Indian named Moroni, who is exceedingly white and delightsome. Yeah. Um, this is a Mormon phrase, interesting, <laughs> white interesting. and delightsome. <laughs> We're going to get into white delightsome. Um, All and right. so, yes, he, he was considered a Lamanite. When you hear that, it's because the Book of Mormon had some main characters in it. Nephi was one. He was the good brother. And Laman and Lemuel were kind of the bad brothers. And Laman was cursed with a dark skin because he was bad. And so that's why he was Native American, or as they <laughs> called them, Indian back in the day. But I'm not right. saying that. <clears throat> and so this all ties into that because he supposedly hid the plates in a hill, Kimura, in his mm -hmm. backyard. Because, I mean, why would you want to travel? Like, psh, if the yeah. angel's coming to you, they're definitely in your backyard. Um, yeah, if, you're a treasure, if you're a treasure hunter, <laughs> you don't want to go very far. Yeah, no, because he had a bum leg, remember? And <laughs> yeah. so um, he couldn't walk too far. <laughs> so he goes there and he gets them. But I do believe he was channeling spirits. But we'll get mm -hmm. there. And um, then he got the plates out of the hill Camorra and he translated them into the Book of Mormon. That's a very quick and dirty version. But we'll get more into it. Just so you know, like why, how, whatever, that's kind of like yeah. the whole story. So okay. again, we're back to these parchments. The other fun thing is that he owned, which was verified by his wife, Emma, was Jupiter Talisman. He wore it always and she wanted it back mm. when he died. So she verified that it was his because she wanted it. Uh, this oh, girl was a ride or die girl. And by the way, she also took a piece of his hair and wore it until the day she died. Not a cool ticket. Oh, <laughs> what? Super creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, I mean, so I love you, honey, but I'm not keeping <laughs> any of your hair. No, it's well, I weird. Got, I ain't got none. So yeah, we yeah, don't have to worry about that. <laughs> hair and teeth, not a good idea to keep any of that stuff. <laughs> no. is, it's pretty awkward. So yeah. um, this talisman, Jupiter talisman is um, something he owned and it was among his most intimate possessions. Very few people knew about it, but like I said, Emma said that this was his. The talisman demonstrates Joseph's fascination with magic. The purpose of such a talisman was to help the owner have influence over others, become mm. rich and powerful, and find peace. The inscription on the talisman comes direct from the Magus <laughs> by Francis oh, Barrett, geez. a magical book. So <laughs> people say he didn't read the Magus, and he couldn't have possibly had a copy of the Magus, and he couldn't read. Bull, bull crap. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, Mars Knife. This is his ceremonial dagger. This copy is a copy of the real dagger and it has Adonai, Scorpio, and in the intelligence of Mars on one side and the seal of Mars on the other. When you have a ceremonial dagger, it's for blood sacrifice. So that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no way around this. This is a yeah. blessing um, as you slice the throat of whatever mm -hmm. you're slicing. Um, it, you don't have to say the prayer out loud because it's on the knife. Okay. So mm -hmm. people that are not familiar with the occult, there you go. But yeah, not normal, not Christian. This is the yeah. real picture. <laughs> and so creepy, creepy. Like I said, it's yeah. a ceremonial magic thing. I have talked to shout out New York Patriot. Um, he was in the OTO. He verified for me. This is very uh, occult in nature. So they, yeah, and they're not using yeah. this dagger to cut bread for mm -mm. communion or anything like mm -mm. that. Like this is just this regular is killing machine. <laughs> this is gross. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. So also fun fact. Um, so remember the story I told you about the plates? Well, he didn't just give them to him all of a sudden. He was like the angel that had the plates in the little hill Kimura. He was guarding them. And so he told Joseph, you know what? You're a little bit young. Come back next year and come back next year. He did this to him for a while. Mm. Well, eventually 
the one year he said, I'm going to give them to you next year, but here's the deal. You got to bring with you your brother, Alvin, because Alvin is the key and he needs to be here. Perfect. Joseph is like, yes, this is great. This is why I think he was channeling spirits, because if you read back about John D and the spirits that were talking to them, they love to screw with people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like they would game. show up. It them. is. Yes. They would show up and be like, P.S. You stink. P.S. We hate the way <laughs> humans smell. And mm -hmm. you didn't do this or that. And everyone says Edward Kelly was faking it. But here's the thing. He literally was screaming at times because they were stabbing him in the eye with things and like trying to break his arm. And I just don't think you would do that. I <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you would fake it till that level. And also, mm -hmm. he tried to run away. He tried to not come back, and they tortured him until he came back. He also never wanted to get married and was super against marriage. And they told him, if you don't go get married, we're going to torture you some more. So he did, and he hated mm -hmm. his wife. By the way, she like loved him till he died, which is super shit. That's bad. But anyway, yeah. Um. So. He did it and then he came back and one of the times they were like, "Hey, why are you married?" <laughs> what? Wow. Like they just love to mess with people. And so same yeah. thing about them swapping wives and all kinds of weird stuff. So I I say that to preface this because whereas reports have been uh industry put in circulation that my son Alvin had been removed from the place of his interment and dissected. First of all, his brother died before they could um, find the angel within that year. He was poisoned, actually. Um, mm. He had constipation and the doctor accidentally gave him too much of whatever they were using to cure him and killed him. Um, <laughs> and Oops. they say, you must know and are peculiar peculiarly, <laughs> I can't say that word, calculated to harrow up the mind of a present and deeply wound the feelings of relations. Therefore, for the purpose of uh, ascertaining the truth of such reports, I, with some of my neighbors this morning, repaired to the grave and removing the earth, found the body which had not been disturbed. Okay, basically, I'm going to explain this to you. And this was like a real in the newspaper ran for six days. Um, this is what this means in <laughs> the Palmyra Sentinel, by the way. 1824. This means he went and said, if you saw me dig up my son, I didn't dig up my son because I wanted to dig up my son. I dug up my son because you said I dug up my son and everybody's put these rumors out that I dug up my son and dissected him, but I didn't. And so I dug him up to show you that I didn't. So I didn't. Cool. That makes perfect sense. It okay. seems like the most believable possibility yeah. of all of this is like choices. the best pre gaming ever, right? This yeah. is like <laughs> this is like really this just in case you saw me digging him up. This is why, right? Oh my god! Oh my gosh! So remember what I said? They said you have to bring Alvin with you. So the big joke is in Mormonism, Alvin had a hand in helping Mormonism be created oh, because yeah. they think they took his hand. Um, if you know anything about skull and bones, like this makes perfect mm -hmm. sense. So, mm -hmm. um, and it's very creepy. So yeah, occult in nature. Remember this. Very, people. very, very. <laughs> also, they love seer stones. Um, Joseph Sandy colored seer stone is this mm. one. They just, when I was little, not a thing. No magic hats, no seer stones. I'll get to mm. where we were when I was young. This was not a thing. But mm -hmm. eventually the internet came out and they were like, ho, ho. We're in trouble. Yeah. So they were like, maybe we should do like his dad and pregame it, which is why I put that where it is <laughs> um, in this little slide description, because basically the church has done the same thing with everything. When everything yeah. started to come out, they were like, ha ha ha. Yeah, we know we have the stone. Look like the stone didn't exist when I was a kid. This was not a thing. We were not hokey pokey people. No magic, mm. no funny stuff. Now it's funny stuff all day long. Mm -hmm. and they put it in a wow. museum yeah so i'm like oh that makes perfect sense wow. okay we're changing everything so joseph smith likely used his brown seer stone while translating the book of mormon his wife emma smith is believed to have made the leather pouch and funny fact is he got this because he stole it <laughs> oh of course <laughs> so yeah he was digging a well for his neighbors next door and she had a seer stone and she, he knew about it and they've all had the parents had him. Everybody had him back then. But mm, his yeah. friend was like, yeah, for sure. And he was like, oh, look at this cool stone. And he's like, yeah, let me see it. Oh, that's mine now. And 
<laughs> they were at his house in his yard in his property and the guy was like no i i want that back now and he was like yeah no i'm not I'm, no and wow. so his yeah so his brother like had to do like a negotiation on this and be like you need to stop now like give it back and he was like yeah no i'm no i'm not giving it back and so he never did and what a this, guy. yeah this pissed off the neighbor which is why the neighbor got so involved in all of the affidavits and everything later because yeah. he had already stolen from him mm. and yeah so he had some background on him yep he was irritated and then mm -hmm. this is why they took him to court basically was yep. because everybody was irritated at this family at this point mm -hmm. pretty much so when i was young Mm -mm, this was not a thing. We're going to get to the Urim and Thummim, but this is how it actually was translated. Joseph would put his head in a hat, put his stone mm -hmm. in the hat, and block out all the light. Sound very Nostradamus or Edward Kelly yeah. to anyone? Yeah. Like, okay, so we're scrying. So if you have any doubt about the scrying or John D's connection, I it will tie together for you by the end, I swear. So when I show you um, the angelic writings you'll see um so when he did this he would just call out these symbols and then he didn't even know what the symbols were he called them reformed egyptian well they weren't they're an okian alphabet and so mm. he didn't know that though he thought he could decipher egyptian and he thought he was super mm. good at it and so his little helpers have ranged from this one is most likely uh, the South Park episode, you know, with Lucy, um, yeah, smart, yeah, smart, yeah. smart, and he's dumb, dumb, dumb. This is who they're talking about. And so also he had his cousin help him, Oliver Cowdery. His wife helped him at one point. Everybody that helped him except his wife um, to do this on the translation end was eventually um, excommunicated, just so you know. Fun mm. fact. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Did, so did anybody mm. else look into the hat or was it just him? Just him. He was okay. the Edward Kelly. Mm -hmm. So nobody else could verify mm -mm. what he was seeing. No, no one else okay. could because okay. here's the thing. His cousin tried that little nonsense and was like, guess what? I had a revelation too because I have a little stone too. And he's like, no, you aren't special. Knock it off. Hmm. So, <laughs> nice. Yes, he, he coined that only the prophet seer and revelator could do that. So this is a copy of the Enochian alphabet above. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This okay. below is an excerpt of Joseph Smith calling out to um, Harris. Why I can't remember his name right now. Martin Harris. There we go. Yeah. Um, and he took it to have it verified because back then they would do that. And he thought it was this cool Egyptian, whatever. And this, it became known as the Anton problem basically and he took it to this guy anton and he's like hey can you verify this for me that this is antiquity and all this stuff and the guy was like yeah i'll do it and he looks at it and he's like yeah this actually looks super old and all this and it looks legit and then he's like so how did you get this and he's like oh yeah well we talked to angels and they're like <laughs> no i i'm not verifying anything mm -hmm. forget about it i'm not doing it and he's like well can i have my paper back and he's like no you can't so <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> So if you look at the bottom and you look at the top and I can zoom it in or out, I mean, wow. Yeah. It looks pretty similar to um, me. Yeah. It's just a little bit com more combined, a little mm -hmm. bit different, but it's mm -hmm. real similar. Okay. This is like, mm, okay. <laughs> I yeah. mean, you can study this later people, but I'm just saying like, I put it side yeah. by side. I made this because people need to see it. And that's yeah, how that is totally. And um, this is what I was telling you about about Joseph when he was fourteen, and God the Father and the Son appeared to him. Fun fact: also, Mormons do not believe in the Trinity. They mm -hmm. believe in God the Father is God, and the Son is the Son, and the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. And also, by the way, just so you know, so back to Gnosis, like to Abraxas. Mm, they believe that Jesus was made in the in the words of the church, just like any other man. So Mary had sex. Oh. Um, okay. No, with a spirit. Kidding. Yes. Okay. And so, yeah, they made a baby. What you are seeing is an authentic first time ever on film reenactment of secret Mormon temple ceremonies that even most Mormons have never seen, and those who have have sworn never to reveal these secrets under penalty of death.
the execution of the penalty is represented by placing the right thumb under the left ear, drawing the thumb quickly across the throat to the right ear, and dropping the hand to the side. All of us who've been through the temple of sworn solemn oaths consenting to having our throat slit and our heart and our vitals thrown, torn out. <laughs> the execution of the penalty is represented by drawing the thumb quickly across the body and dropping the hands to the side. In the Mormon temple marriage, the partners are sealed to each other for time and all eternity. <laughs> Her face. Like rituals. And without <laughs> this ceremony, yeah. no one can enter the presence of Joseph Smith and become a god. Hey, lay, air. Brother Pratt, having authority, I wash you preparatory to receiving your anointings for and in behalf of John Kimball, who is dead, that you may become clean from the blood and sins of this generation. Sister Bradford, I wash you preparatory to you receiving your anointings for and in behalf of Eliza Barrett. Eliza Barrett, who is dead, that you may become clean from the blood and sins of this generation. I wash your head, that your brain and intellect may become clear and active. Your eyes, that you may see clearly and discern between truth and error. Thousands of occultic ceremonies each day are performed for the dead, so that they too can receive the benefits of Mormonism. Mormons are encouraged to have encounters with the dead, and it's not uncommon for demons impersonating the dead to appear to Mormons stating that they've been converted to the Mormon church in the spirit world, and now want their family history traced. Your loins, that you may be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, that you may have joy in your posterity. Your vitals and bowels, that they may be strong and healthy and perform their proper function. Your breast, that it may be the receptacle of pure and virtuous principles. Fun. Super wow. fun. Yeah. So, so let me shut Masonic. that and go to the next. So then after you do all that, that was a really quick reenactment of a two hour mm -hmm. long ceremony um, after and you're naked Jeez. underneath that poncho. And that that's was quite fun. a commitment. Just oh, the yeah. two hours for me. That's, oh, I'm out. That's oh and you long. have to do it all the time. That's church is also two hours, but it used to be three. So okay. they got to the point where they were like, mm, nobody wants to do three hours. So. Because you're like at church all the time. Like nobody um, wants to be a god that much. <laughs> they do. Apparently they do. <laughs> <laughs> so they not only do church, but they do um family home evening is on Mondays where you have to do a little thing with your kids and teach them all the things. And then um if you don't do it, you feel like crap because like there's so much stuff to do and then you just can't ever do it all. But even if you do do it, it's fine, and then you still feel like Mm, I have so much stuff to do. Um, and then yeah. it's women's meeting on one day and men's meeting on one day and the kids meeting on one day and the teenagers meeting on another day. And it's just a chaos. You're just at church all the time. Just forget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember um, and tell me if this is normal or not, but I remember mm -hmm. one of my son's friends, he would go every day to the church and Se was for it like, for seminary? I don't know, but it was like two yeah, hours. So. It was so seminary school every yes, day. Yes, that's seminary. If it's before school. So I graduated from seminary and I went okay. for four years. Um, you have to go. It's very much like catechism. If anybody knows mm -hmm. about Catholic mm -hmm. studies, yep. that's like catechism. And you have to do that. Well, you don't have you do, but you don't. Um, they started doing it before school because a lot of people in Utah, it's not. It's one of your classes and you don't have to go before no. school because it's Utah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. So yeah. but for other places or whatever, then they don't have enough credits. So they make it before school. But um, you learn about it's just like Jesus school. Yeah, but it's not yeah. Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's Joseph school. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then after you go through that really Masonic word ceremony and it gets way deeper, that was a very quick mm -hmm. um, reenactment of what they do in the temple and also the preparatory initiatory where they were talking with the ponchos. And mm -hmm. first you do initiatory. My great grandma, that's this lady over here. Um, when I went through, I was like, I feel really uncomfortable because I'm naked and I'm super pregnant and this poncho and it doesn't cover anything. And she goes, Oh, be lucky. When I went through, we had to get in a tub and get scrubbed naked. I was like, Oh, that's cool. Oh um, my yeah. Gosh. So it has evolved. Now they don't even do the poncho thing because you are naked underneath and they would, they would touch you, but not like, um, sexually, like right here mm -hmm. for the breast thing. They kind of showed mm -hmm. a rip in the boob and that's not true. I don't like to sensationalize things. It's weird enough. Mm -hmm. 
It really right? is. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't yeah. need sure. any more weirdness. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, they bless your loins, all that stuff. Well, the first time you go through, you go through for yourself. But the next time you go through, you go through for dead people. And they did Hitler and Barack Obama's mom and Marilyn and, oh, and Frank and a bunch of Jewish people that died for what they believe in and made them, you know, Mormons. But that's fine. Um, no, it's not fine. Wow. <laughs> so, wow. and if they lie and say they didn't, I have like the dates that they did Hitler. Like, lit- oh, it was December gosh. something. I can't remember. But I have it written down. Um, yeah. So they kept doing this until the Jewish people were like, okay, knock it off. Like you did hit. What are you yeah. doing? You did Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and then, so it became a thing and then they kind of talked and then they were like, stop it. And then they did for a minute and then they did it again. <laughs> <laughs> so if you die and your records are at all public, you probably will end up in a Mormon ceremony at some point in your life. They are obsessed yeah. with genealogy and they take all those names and they put them in their temple files and then people do them. So they do it by proxy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so we're going to get back to Abraxas because of that. And then you get these weird okay. underwear, which I wore forever. They're, it's not comfy. They're not fun. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't look be, great. Yeah, no. Yeah. Look at how long the freaking crotch is. Who has a crotch this <laughs> long? <laughs> I don't understand why they would make basically the same length for the women mm-hmm. as men because men have a reason why they're long. We don't have to get into why. Right. The you know is- why. They have things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like you you have to make the room for the things. Well, girls right. don't have things. And so it made it really nice when it was your time of the month. Great. Because oh, you cannot wear yeah. underwear underneath these and you cannot wear your bra underneath these. These have to be touching your skin. Oh, so wow. on the openings is the Masonic Square and Compass. Um, can you see the markings? Let's see. Oh, you can see. Them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. see yeah. You know what? I wow. am such a dumbass. Let me tell you, I thought these were breast starts like for sewing. <laughs> Oh, oh! For okay. so long, I had no idea, and then my grandma was like, "Oh, they're just sacred markings, blah blah blah." When I finally was like, "Well, maybe you know." So that's the square and compass, and on the belly button is a sideways ruler, and on the knee, and so, hmm. um, and I was like, "Well, what are they for?" And she's just like, "Oh, they're just there." And then also weird, after they wear out, because these are your underwear, you need seven mm-hmm. pairs of these. I mean, I think. <laughs> I mean, you would think, you know, seven, yeah. seven. Yeah. And you change them just like underwear. You can't put them on the floor. You can't wash them with anything else. You have to put them on with your right arm first and your right leg first and to blah, blah, blah. It's like a whole thing. And you never take them off except if you're going to the gym, if you're going swimming or if you're making more Mormons, you get me. So, yeah. Yeah. Which wow. is a lot because they want you to have a ton of kids. But, um, well, and you yeah. try to get out of that thing as much as possible, I'm sure. Oh, and you have to wear, like I said, your bra and everything over it. So if you have big boobs, like your boob slips under, <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. it's a whole thing. And so it's very uncomfortable. Um, they've come a long way though, because it used to be way worse. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. They, they used to be long johns with the butt flap. So uh, it's gotten better, but it makes you wonder what you're school. invoking into your body with open orifices. Also, the church blesses those and you can't um, just get them from anywhere. You have to have mm-hmm. your temple recommend and it's all barcoded and, and then you take it and they scan it and then you can buy them if you're mm-hmm. worthy. And if you're not, like say you have some indiscretion or problem, then they make it so you can't buy them, but you might mm-hmm. need them because you're not supposed to not wear them. So it's very strange because if you get in trouble and you need new underwear, it's a whole problem. Um, yeah. Don't they have a thing wow. where it like once they wear out, you can't just you throw ha- them away. No, you have to cut all the symbols out and burn them. Okay. I knew there was something weird. Mm-hmm. See, that's weird that you have to cut the symbols out. Right. You have to cut them out and burn them. Hmm. Like, they mm. cannot just be out loosed. And then you can use them as rags or whatever after that. They can't show. So if you're a woman, never again will you wear a tank top outside of your home. Ever. Mm. Um, never again will you wear a cutie little sundress. I'm not saying that's everything. But like most of them are getting yeah. these when they're getting married and they're in their young 20s. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a bummer. I mean, that's not the point. But, you know. Yeah. Right. Oh, also, by the way, they're 40 bucks a pair. And you can only buy them at the church. So... 
40 Jeez. bucks a pair times wow. seven plus this little cute temple outfit um this What's is the about markup two... on that 40 dollars. oh that? yeah it's a lot and then you have to have it and you have to have yeah. this outfit i mean the outfit you can rent but you have to have the underwear it's like you can't get out of it i mean mm -mm. So it's costing you money and the church owns the full patent on that. And the church has like, they, they're the only ones that produce them. Like mm -hmm. you can't just go buy these anywhere. Like there is not no on Amazon. Area. No way. Well, actually funny <laughs> thing is you can buy these on eBay, oh, <laughs> but they're still yeah. 50 bucks. So yeah. Yeah. If you want magic, I mean, that's underwear, when you get real you desperate. Get them. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Um, this was back in the day too. Like when I bought mine, mm -hmm. I went through in 1996. So, wow. um, also I did want to mention the slicing of the throat. They quit doing, um, I went right why. before I went, oh, I know why I'll tell you why, but I, I can't prove this. Um, so in 1987, there was a horrific murder. I am actually trying to book with the survivor's husband called the Lafferty oh. murders. And it was a really famous case. And the brothers decided that the wife was bad because she wouldn't do what the other brother, their, their brother said. And that was her husband. So there's something in the Mormon church called blood atonement, which is mm. why you would slit your throat if you mm -hmm. ever divulge the secrets like I'm doing right now or spill your belly uh, guts out. Mm -hmm. And the Mormon church says they never had anything to do with it but they did <laughs> and there are quotes from brigham young himself stating love your neighbor enough to kill them mm. you oh, heard me <clears throat> so um some sins are not able to be atoned for by jesus christ's blood and they feel that you have to atone for them with your own blood mm. and one of those um reasons would be talking like i'm talking right now mm-hmm about all of this stuff um this is their temple ceremony clothing they wear them over so you get a white dress and then or pants and suit thing and then you have the stuff that's ceremonial is the hat the veil the side robe that only covers one breast uh shout out new york patriot again really mm -hmm. oto memory um but they don't wear clothes underneath they just let it go <laughs> um and then the apron is green it's kind of looks dark right here but it's it's fig leaves just so you know and then okay uh-huh yeah and then it's probably not slippers. a masonic not masonic apron at all, at all. Doesn't no. masonic. Uh -uh. definitely not and see they're raising <laughs> their hand to the square and doing their secret mm -hmm. handshakes so this is one of the signs in the temple oh here's the long john underwears I need to move that over one. So this is what they used to look like. And wow. then it, you can still buy a one piece if you want one. I don't know why you would want one, but my grandpa wore them like that. So, and then <laughs> now they're this way. And if you're in the military or a police officer, you can get black or army green ones. So, mm. um, just hmm. because they understand that, I mean, they're probably not going to be able to cover white, you know? <laughs> Um, and there again, Masonic symbols. Mm -hmm. These handshakes. Okay, most people, this is where Mormons get real pissed. They're already probably mad at me because I showed all the little outfits and underwear. This is yeah. even worse. But we only have three of the five of these handshakes. So the fun thing is, is that um, Joseph Smith was a Mason. It's well known now. When I was young, he wasn't a Mason. Just so you know, like mm -hmm. that wasn't a yeah. thing. And then all of a sudden, now he is. And if you go and look on... Um, like youtube and you put in mason mormon this cute little video will come up from the church like so you've heard masons are mormons or mormons are masons <laughs> so are you curious about it and they do this dumb little video like yeah blah 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 and then <laughs> i'm like what is happening they're just throwing everything out there now i guess like okay mm -hmm. and they also had um some quotes from kimball multiple of their presidents which any president of the church is their prophet seer and revelator he receives mm -hmm. actual okay. direct revelation from god and tells us what it is so um anyway that's how that works so okay. okay this right here there's only three of them that are ours and like i said joseph was a mason six weeks later after he got his masonic temple ceremony stuff he created the temple ceremony for the mormons and mm -hmm. like i said they say they have the true masonry now so 
This was okay. multiple people have quoted about the true masonry. So he mm -hmm. took this, like, say this one. This is one for us. And you can actually look up Thomas S. Monson and the president do this in front of mm -hmm. everyone, which is a no-no. You should never do this symbol unless you're in the temple itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. But he did in front of everyone. Wow. And so that makes me wonder, what the hell were they talking about? Or what were they trying to show there? Like, yeah. that's weird, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. This real grip of the Master Mason or the true grip of the lion's paw for us is called the true sign of the nail. Because it goes, and instead mm. of having oh. the finger go up, they did it and had it go down onto the wrist mm. where Jesus was crucified. So, he I just see. made them, like... Mormony, you just you just tweaked him a little bit. <laughs> Jesusy, you made him kind of yeah. Jesusy. Yeah. Jesus and then yeah, and then these are the signs and penalties again. Um, and then so while you're going through, you hear this. You sit there after this part I showed you. That was just like the intro. You get your mm -hmm. underwear. You do the poncho thing. They tell you you're getting blessed over your loins. All that weird stuff. Now they don't do it naked. They wear a zip up baptism outfit because too many people complained mm -hmm. um, oh i lost my place there they also don't do the slit throat because lafferty brothers who by the way my friends um take care of because they work at the prison and mm -hmm. um the murder was so bad because they blood atoned her because she didn't want to do what he said about the whole polygamy thing and they almost cut off her head and they did almost cut off the baby's head and wow. they killed them and then that was in 1987 and in 1990 they got rid of it i don't think that's mm. a coincidence no um, too much heat yeah. on it yeah it was it was under scrutiny and mm -hmm. he still believes to this day that he is elijah the prophet and his hmm. brother died the other brother that helped with the murders but he absolutely feels that god told him to blood atone her and he doesn't feel bad about it at all so hmm. I am really yeah. trying hard right now to get an interview with the surviving um, brother, which was the husband of, of in the Lafferty murders. So yeah. that would be incredible. Crossing my fingers. I am like talking to him. Like I'm like, wow. oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So hopefully um, he's never done an interview in his life. So Ooh. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, please, but he's really nervous. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. If mm -hmm. people want to watch an interesting show about them, and it also has the reenactment of the temple stuff in it, under the banner of heaven on Hulu is um, John Krakauer's book, um, Under the Banner of Heaven. It's a true story of the murders. So okay. it's here. We'll and that um, that's a true story. And it's really sad. Um, yeah. And Brenda Lafferty didn't deserve that. And her poor husband, like, he he dropped off the face of the planet after all this happened with his brothers and everything and then he's still a mormon so that's really mm. hard for him and then his dad was like under all this weird scrutiny because he was really really um serious and disciplinarian mm. and anyways sure. his mom finally passed away so i think that might be why he's opening up now because i don't think mm. he want to make more problems with his family i don't right. i don't sure. have proof of that yet but alan lafferty was completely innocent not even home or around that day. And that's what he walked into when he came home from work that night. Hmm. So, yeah, that was yucky. Sad. So um, he, like I said, he's just never talked about it. Um, so I do think that's why they got rid of this. <clears throat> and then these others they do. Uh, as you're watching this weird thing about Adam and Eve, you're sitting there in the temple with all this stuff on. And you're like, what the hell are we doing? This is at the point where you're like, oh my gosh. It's like when Scientologists get to the end and they've spent all this money and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can't go back. You know, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, shit. And then they ask you like, well, anybody that wants to get up and leave can. And you're just like, yeah, right. Your whole family's there. This is supposed to be your best day ever. Usually you're getting yeah. married or going on a mission. And so okay. mm -hmm. there's no way to get out of it. It's just not. People always say, you seem smart. How would that happen? It's it's like your life. Like mm -hmm. You can't just tell your grandma you're not going to do it because you're not comfy. Although I did tell my grandma this is really weird. What the hell? Mm -hmm. And she said, don't worry, you'll get used to it. That was the only thing I got told. No one mm -hmm. will tell you about any of this before because it's sacred. Even mm -hmm. when you're taking temple preparation classes, which they have you do, 
they don't go over any of this and (laughs) they don't tell you why you're doing any of it. You just do it because everybody's doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So it's kind of like you feel like an idiot later, but Anyway. Well, it's either you're dumb or the whole rest of your family is dumb. <laughs> right. And that's, yeah. and, and that's really hard to believe sometimes is that the whole rest of your family has led you down this path. And, right. And, and it can't nobody, not possibly be wrong, you know? Right. Yeah. And at one point, is somebody going to say, hey, this is weird? No, because they, they're believing in it, you know? And so you're kind of stuck in that way, which is. is well, and is if sad. you don't do this stuff and you don't go to the temple, then you cannot go to the highest exaltation because there's three heavens and you can't go to the top. Hmm. So, and also he did say that you can't go to the top unless you have three wives. So hmm. there's that. Um, but. Better get back on Tinder. Right. <laughs> And they take things back all the time. They're like, mm, the God, God told me I was there and praying and I got a revelation. And I'm like, do you use the stone and the hat or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. He's like, no, this one's easy. I need to have three wives. Uh. Fun fact. Russell M. Nelson is the current um, president of the church prophet. And he is an Allen Key member. He is a surgeon and he is also a Skull and Bones member. So that doesn't sound too Christian. (laughs) Yeah. It's hard to make those connections. Yeah. Uh He was the first one to get the hat out and he tried it on and he was like, look at me. Mm. And I'm like, no, this didn't exist five years ago. I don't don't know what's (laughs) happening. But now it does. So it's white, which I thought was weird. I was always like, really? Huh. Hmm. That's strange. Yeah. I didn't envision like strange. white, but okay. They okay. say it is. It is. So <laughs> um, this wow. is also the part that really flipped me out. This where they mm. in the movie where they were chanting and raising their arms. Um, they s- used to say Pele L in the movie. They had that because that's an old movie, but like you can't just find reenactments anywhere. Like that's a really mm-hmm weird thing and it was because sandra tanner did that and she's really against the church so she also left um Mm -hmm. she's great so uh anyway they took that out and now they say oh god hear the words of my mouth well before that there was like a big to do about pele l and if you look it up on the actual hebrew translation people were saying it means false god and i think that's why they took it out Mm. so all these things they change also and but remember this is supposed to be like your ticket to heaven and this is what joseph said we had to do so i don't know how it can be changed because that's like changing the bible's most important things like this is supposed to be critical to get to heaven this is it and so after you do the adam and eve thing and you do these chanting there's a book in the middle of where they're chanting and Mm -hmm. when somebody that's mormon says i'll put your name on the temple list nope if you're a christian just pass on that say miss me with that one sister just pray for me regular because they're gonna put your name in a in a book and now it's like all computer generated and they print it but they put it in like a little box and then they mm. chant around it and this in this up and down oh, wow. it's just so bad and i sat there going oh my gosh they're chant like they're chanting like at this point you kind of know like shit you know you're just yeah, made a mistake done? oh yeah and you you remember you're supposed to be super happy you have heard about right. it there are hymns that say when you're little like um i'm gonna go to the temple one day blah 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 like and they give you handkerchiefs and it's pure white you got to take it with you someday when you go to the temple and like they prep you for this from birth and Mm -hmm. so you're excited like this is like a big deal and then you get there and you're like whoa all right nobody told me we were doing chanting um yeah i think that's called grooming would have been nice to know oh yeah it starts early (laughs) and even when you're like two and three and four like little kids will go up we have fast and testimony meeting and that means on the first of every month they fast and then they have a testimony about it and they go to testimony meeting and that you can bear your testimony and this is what they say Mm. i'd like to bear my testimony and i know this church is true and i thank god for my family and for the prophet and then they usually say his name with his middle name and everything i don't know why that's important but it is like it's always mm. thomas s swanson or russell m nilton <laughs> i can't yeah. wait i don't know very serial killer-esque yes mm. right it's strange and so when you're four and you don't understand what 
testimony means you're up there mm-hmm. saying this stuff and the parents and everybody are like you did so good and i did it to my kids and probably messed them up you know mm. um yeah that's a whole nother box of crap but uh <laughs> so yeah. now you don't wear this veil anymore either and after this whole adam and eve thing and the creation story the devil comes which is cool and he comes and give us um the i think nope i don't have a picture here of the apron and the apron there is the one the uh, fig leaves one and my great grandma told me one time she's like <laughs> Yeah, they were way better when we were young. And I was like, oh, really? And they, they're totally Masonic, like with the grid floor and the pillars. And mm-hmm. it's, it's great. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's crazy. But who gives you the apron and tells you you're naked is Lucifer. And they used to mm-hmm. act this stuff out. This is great. Now they don't so much because of COVID. And they called it a live ceremony instead of watching the the little temple movie. Um now lucifer would come out and he had a black cape and a black top hat and everything it was badass and he's like wah ha ha you know and like get (laughs) and you're like really i mean this is why you're just like holy cow and so anyway he's like you're naked so you should put this um on and he gives you the apron and and then everybody at the same time like the temple guy goes okay patrons everyone rise and now we will put on our aprons and i'm like why are we doing what Lucifer said to do? Just curious. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's not how the story Excuse goes. I don't question. remember it this way. I'm like, what's happening here? And then you eventually, someday, like after the two hours, see this little part back here, you get to the veil of the temple and mm-hmm. you do these secret handshakes through the veil, but it used to be cooler and you'd have to go breast to breast. But like... <laughs> obviously women were like i don't want to put my boob on the guy on the other side that's fake god because you know it's uncomfy and so they got rid of that now they just have you stick your hand through the cuts which are actually exactly like the cuts in the garments for (laughs) yeah it's all super masonic so then you do that and then after that happens your husband goes through first and he got a new name so if, mm-hmm. if your like name is Dave, you probably got something like Gabriel or some cool thing. And and then <laughs> women get like some Bible name too. And then so the man goes through and tells his name to God because fake God's on the other side. And you he says mm-hmm. whatever his name is and he calls you through. That's how you know that God's calling you, right? Mm-hmm. And these secret handshakes are just to pass the angels and sentinels that guard the veil to get through. So you can't, you can't go unless you know all this stuff. And then, so when I go through, I don't give my name to God. I give my name to my husband because mm. remember, you can't go to heaven unless you have the priesthood. And women mm. don't ever have the priesthood, but their husband does. So women that mm-hmm. used to not get married or women that didn't get married in the temple at all would not go to heaven. And neither would black mm. people. Wow. And Jeez. so, yes. Which is also um, very Masonic. And we get a new yeah. name. And I used to think it was super cool that like, oh, I got a new name. It was Abigail. And I'm not ever supposed to tell anybody, but there it is because I don't care. <laughs> and um, also, I think it's a load of crap because mm-hmm. here's the thing. If I forget what name it is, because I told my grandma that after I was like, oh, man, I don't know. What if I forget? Like, I'm not supposed to write mm-hmm. it down. There's all these rules. Like, she's like, don't worry. You just call the temple. I'm like, well, how, how will they know my special name from God? And she's like, oh, that's because everybody that went through on that day got the same name. <laughs> right. Oh, oh my God. Of course they did. Of course they did. Okay, <laughs> fine. So, I didn't know that part. So, oh, yeah. Here's your special name. That's just Here for you on your special day. Yeah. Special. Yes. And this is the other part, how uh, these are the drawings that depict how Joseph actually deciphered all the plates, right? When I was little, remember how I told you when I was young, this was, this was it, okay? They would show him being very studious, sitting, studying with his little glasses on because they're called the Urim and Thummim and breastplate of righteousness sound very familiar. Mm-hmm. It's also in the Bible, but it's very Masonic and Jewish Gnostics, like big mm-hmm. thing. So just like this, see his breastplate and his little glasses and they're hooked to the breastplate, but then they hurt okay. his eyes. And so he kind of was like, mm, 
Uh, we're going to use this rock. Oh, look, I got to move that. <laughs> There's his damn apron. Um, so that is the old ones, Satan's apron. Mm. There it is. But that was just wow. yes. So uh, Satan wears a dark apron, which he says is a symbol of his powers and priesthoods. Also, he tells you that they're kind of for sale for money, which is really weird. There's a lot of weird stuff. <laughs> I could go on. We'd be here all day. And I'm already like that. So uh, all seeing eye, <laughs> beehives. It's all 30, yeah. $39.95. Right, exactly. Yeah. You can have one too. I'm sure I bet you money they sell these. If they don't, oh, yeah. I'm sure. Fabulous yeah. idea. I don't know why you'd want it. Um, Urim and Thummim, here it is. That doesn't look very Christian. What? Yeah. All right. So wow. they say. Um, yes, and he says that this is what he would look through, and that yeah, whatever, and that this is the breastplate, and it would have these certain stones on it, and it's all super like Jewish Gnosticy, like it's mm -hmm. weird. Um, and here's another picture of that, and there's something also called the mm -hmm. Liahona, but we can't get into it today. But just look it up; it's it's the most ridiculous fun ever like i yeah. said i never have to make up anything and i'm always like yeah what should i put in there today <clears throat> like you guys are actually getting a brand new slideshow which is why i'm a little nice. discombobulated because i was like oh everybody's heard my other one like i, I want to nobody's heard about the urim and thummim you guys are the first so nice, nice. also exclusive I yes like it, it is an exclusive <laughs> and i never put in this amazing occultic cow baptismal um, wow. so this yeah, is inside the temple about that. No, definitely not because oxen and the belly of the beast doesn't scream Marduk at all. Um, yeah. anyway, yeah. whatever. So, you know, how they used to have the cow that they would burn the people in alive. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? Mm -hmm. And they were usually innocent people that they sacrificed right. like kids. Mm, yes. Okay. So when we're young, 12 years old and above, you have to be morally clean. So i.e. virgin-ish, like hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. And you've gone through and talked to your bishop about it and everything. You go and you get baptized. This is what it's called. Baptism for the dead. Because <laughs> that doesn't sound scary at all. Um, and you take all these kids and you're baptizing them for the dead people in proxy. So this is what they did with Hitler and all that stuff I was telling you. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. But isn't it funny? They make us all wear white. We can't see out and see who's out. There's like these really bright lights. You can't see crap out into the stands. So there could be a bunch of pervs out there. Who even knows? Mm -hmm. You're in all white. You're pre you're like pubescent. My husband, oh, I asked my husband, geez. I'm like, how did you feel? And he's like, really weird. Cause I was short and little and everyone else was like a full ass man. And I wasn't yet. And I was like, man, mm -hmm. I felt opposite. Like I was a grown ass woman and mm -hmm. I didn't want to go, you know, same type of thing. It was like, nobody yeah. wants to be there. And then you're putting these virgin kids in a, in a belly of a beast. You tell me that doesn't oh represent gosh. that. Mm -hmm. It's very sacrificial. I never put it together until later because I was like yeah. reading about occult stuff and mm -hmm. and sacrifices. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I think maybe <laughs> maybe this is bad. Yeah. Like ba very it's Baal, wild. right? Or Baal, whatever, yeah. however you want to mm -hmm. say it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so these are supposed to be representative of the 12 tribes of Israel that are lost. But and they're mm -hmm. usually gold. This one is different. Usually they're golden mm -hmm. calves, which even make it more fun. Wow. If you look up about that. So not a cultic at all in nature, right? <clears throat> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this is a fun one that I've also never spoken about. The Kinderhook plates were discovered in 1843 in an Indian mound near Kinderhook, Illinois. And they were a set of six bell-shaped brass pieces with strange engravings. And they were discovered mm -hmm. in 1843 near Kinderhook, Illinois. Well, the fun thing is, is they were like, hey... Joseph, these have got your reformed Egyptian on them. Can you help us out and tell us what they say? And he made up this whole big story. I'm not going to, because it will take too long. And he tells them, oh, yeah, this was some other, you know, guy and this story and that story. Because remember, his was about Nephi. So it's a different thing. And he mm -hmm. tells this whole story. And then they were like, oh, that's very interesting. And then some farmer was like, I freaking made those. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they're Stop not it. that. No, it's real. This is so funny. And they're like, no, you didn't. And Joseph was like, anyways, I got shit to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I'll be back later. So yeah, great. he was like, whatever. Probably said that. Also, fun fact. <laughs> We're going to oh get into gosh. this, but he didn't know no Egyptian. Like, no, we have the Rosetta oh, Stone gosh. now, and he was way <laughs> off. So Jeez. this is part of uh, President Brigham Young. He was the second president of the church, and this is how funny he is with racism. If the white man who belongs to the chosen seed mixes his blood with the seed of Cain, those with dark skin, the penalty under the law of God is death on the spot. This will yeah. always be so. <clears throat> okay. Okay, there is, um, this is loving our neighbor as ourselves. If he needs help, help him. And yeah. if he wants salvation and it is necessary to spill the blood on the earth in order that he may be saved, then spill it. Any of you that understand the principles of eternity, if you have sinned a sin requiring the shedding of blood, accept that sin unto death, would not be satisfied nor rest until your blood should be spilled, that you might gain the salvation that you desire. And this is the way to love mankind. Brigham Young, Salt Lake City, February 8th, 1857. Not making it wow. up. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, he it. sounds like a, a, oh, a neat dude. Oh, he's great. He's great. Yeah, he had like parties. 50 something wives. And remember, yeah. they said you have to take all these wives to replenish the earth, right? With children. Mm -hmm. Guess how many kids he had? Like four. He had probably. 50 wives. <laughs> um, I don't even Not sure. 60. A lot. That is not replenishing the earth. That is a hit it and quit it. And you know better. That was oh, a one wow. night stand. And uh, I guess a couple of them were a little lucky to get to, or somebody had twins. I don't even know. <clears throat> wow. so, yeah. He also, like my family, for me, also this hit really deeply at home because my mom is married to a half um, Spanish, half Native American. My brother married a very uh, dark African-American lady from Chicago area. Her dad was like from Haiti. My niece is half black, obviously. Uh, my sister married a half Polynesian, half uh, Chinese guy. Like my, all my nieces and nephews are mixed. All of my family is mixed. So when I read this, mm. this, this really mm -hmm. pissed me off. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, you just can't let it go. Right. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's he also said that if you were to find your wife in bed with a black man, best to just kill them both right there. Wow. He was a super great guy. Um, I call him bloody Brigham. If you go to my Patreon and you want to sign up, it's five bucks, which is like less than a coffee. And mm -hmm. we do a whole series on only murder mayhem Mormons. It has to be Mormon mm. related. And I did a whole big one on bloody Brigham because he, wow. he was responsible for some stuff. Um, also, I think it's very bad when you give people information like that and talk about blood atoning and weirdo stuff because some people are not mentally capable to not understand that's wrong. Like the guy I told you right. about in prison. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, don't give, I work in mental health. We don't want to put that out there. Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what are you doing? Ultimately, you are responsible for the death of a lot of people because right. you did that. You put that out there and he still thinks like mm -hmm. that that was right, you know? Hmm. bad bad things so yeah. this is part also with racism this is actually out of the book of mormon second nephi uh, 521 and he had caused the cursing to come upon them yea even a sore cursing because of their iniquity for behold they had hardened their hearts against him and they had become like unto flint so black Wherefore, mm -hmm. as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be uh, enticing unto my people, the Lord God did cause a skin of blackness to come upon them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Second Nephi 2.15. And their curse was taken from them, and their skin became white like unto the Nephites. <laughs> Wow. Oh Again, so yes, another fun one with John Taylor, president of the church as well, another president. Uh, after And after the flood, we are told that the curse that had been pronounced upon Cain was continued through Ham's wife as she married uh, a wife of that seed, as he married a wife of that seed. And why did it pass through the flood? Because it was necessary that the devil should have representation upon the earth. 
So I can't read the rest right there. But basically they're saying no matter what, even if you have free agency or whatever, like it will still happen. Like evil okay. has to be there because why would God allow that to happen? He's like, Oh, because the devil has to be represented. What? No, Yeah. no. These are like fun, stupid facts. Also, I've never presented any of this or the book of Abraham to anyone. I know I'm going long. I'm sorry. No, you're good. It's okay. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the book of Abraham gets into also some fun stuff. <laughs> Because it's hilarious. So this yeah. punishment, have you heard of it before? Mm -mm. No. I've okay. Seen this. this is, I've never presented this ever. I like had this already for you guys. Because I was like, I'm going to give you. us something new. <laughs> <laughs> um, so fringy. He, yes. I was like, yes, we'll go extra fringy and weird. <laughs> there you go. You guys are fringy. And so Joseph said he bought these papyri from a traveling salesman, basically of mummies and parchments mm. so he decided that this was like some big thing that he was supposed to translate like the other plates that went so well yeah um mm. and he was like oh i know all about this and this is going to be scripture now oh mm. okay then and okay. i remember this being in scripture as a kid well when you want to talk about a cult in nature you want to go to egyptian because it's great mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so oh, yeah in the, the one side, and people can look at this later, it like tells what the real translation is versus like the Egyptian part and versus uh, what Joseph said. And so like all of this is translated how wrong he was. Oh, wow. He didn't plan on Rosetta Stone. He didn't plan on the internet, right. like any of this. So he said mm -hmm. this was all about Abraham and like the significance of Abraham and Pharaoh and the prince and blah, blah, blah. And actually this is super occultic. This is like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it gets into Horus and weird Osiris and just, mm. and they put it in the Book of Mormon. Wow, and wow, wow. and it's still in there and they can't get rid of it because they're like oh if we say this isn't true then he's gonna look even worse than he already does mm -hmm. so they yeah, just say a bit of a predicament yeah they just say no this is what it is and they're wrong hmm. okay wow and so it makes me giggle because i'm just like wait you can't just keep it like that now everybody knows the truth and you're just gonna like and whenever they don't want to deal with something, they just are like, that wasn't true. Like, <laughs> no, yeah. no. Never like, collab. <laughs> like, do you know yeah, about that's what Kolob? my kids do. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, they gaslight the shit out of people. So, uh -huh. do you know what I'm talking about with collab? Uh -uh. Oh, gosh. It's so fun. Okay. So, collab is where you can get, like, we believe, I say we a lot because... I was a Mormon. No, oh, yeah. Um, yeah so, it takes a while. Yeah. It's, well, and I'm always talking about it. So then people know what I'm talking about. But yeah. they believe that there's a pre mortal existence. So before you're born, you lived with God up in heaven and you picked everything. So if your life sucks shit, you did it. You did it to yourself. <laughs> and you should just pat yourself on the back because you're really strong. And that's, you know, my life was hard. So this was really also hard for me because they were like, well, mm -hmm. you chose your parents and you chose your predicaments and you chose everything. Everything that you're mm -hmm. going to go through, you chose. But yet we have free agency somehow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Good, good, good. Okay. So <laughs> then on top of it, after you die, there's another existence. There's the three levels of heaven. But when you go past all of that and you become like God, because remember, God was just like man. And mm. he's kind of, it's kind of very reminiscent of the emerald tablets. Now that I know things that are weird. Yeah. Um, mm. Very ascended master. Okay. They're mm -hmm. like, you can become like God too. Mm -hmm. You can go forward. And then what you get to do as a woman though, is you get to be eternally pregnant and have spirit babies. <laughs> but the men get to have tons of wives and they get to have sex forever and ever. And then they get their own planet. So just like God made this planet and put us here, you can go to another planet and make another planet and <laughs> you can populate it and do all this stuff with the spirit babies. And then so, so Kolob, <laughs> this is so, yeah, 
It's wild. So, yes. So you can own your own planet. And so now people are like, that's badass. I want to own a planet. And then people are like, so where's that in the Mormon stuff? And they're like, what? And like, Kolob. But having a collab, I learned about it as a kid. It was like in all the stuff. And so was mm-hmm. the people being cursed with their skin and all this. Stuff. Right. What? <laughs> what did you say? Stop it. <laughs> yeah. No. Wow. They've literally, I've had people ask me, like, who ruined the getting your own planet? Because that sounds absolutely cool. And I'm like, I don't know <laughs> yeah. because they say it never happened. And they're like, what do you mean? And I'm like, it's just, yeah. And so if you look up, if you guys want to, backing of what Kolob was and what I'm talking about, look up the King mm-hmm. Follett uh, sermon. He talks all about it in there. King Follett sermon, Kolob. So okay. I know I've dumped so much stuff on, on you guys today. No, you're good. Nope. I'm like, this things to look that's what's good about there. podcasts. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can just push okay. pause and good. go yeah, look true. this stuff up. True, I'm yeah. like yeah. nailing Screenshot. you guys right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm Love sorry. Um, and so then this was also in there like i said about the book of abraham and and his translation versus what it really means and Mm -hmm. you know this this picture i remember this vividly because i was bored always and i'm like this is badass picture and like (laughs) he's got a knife he's gonna kill him you know um (laughs) and so i always thought oh man that's crazy you know and so here we are We're talking about friggin' Osiris and Horus Mm. and reincarnation. And it all sounds super, that sounds super Christian, doesn't it? Like this. Totally. Totally. (laughs) Yeah. He also bought some mummies. So I think that's badass. Mm. And (laughs) he's just like, I don't understand if he wasn't martyred, this all would have went away. Because this is bananas. Mm -hmm. This is literally yeah. insane like i've dumped enough on you guys today for you to go why would anybody do this like what right. what are yeah. you guys talking about and but but this happens and people know this part it's not like mm-hmm. the weird occultic ceremonies and you're already drug in like this stuff is is all out there and same with the racism yeah. it's out there uh by the way mm-hmm. the racist stuff didn't end until 1978 oh, i was wow. already born yeah yeah, well, and you now they're playing catch up and trying oh. to and trying to hide and trying to figure out how to get rid of the, the persona. They said the gay stuff last couple of years, and now they're in trouble. Yeah, they're trying to remove this persona away from this guy, right? Yes. Because this guy is causing them a lot of problems, and then you have this other guy that comes in. You're like, okay, that guy's causing a lot of problems. <laughs> and how do you get rid of? You're like, there's this so many stain. problems. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, at, at what point do you say? And we say this a lot on the podcast. At what point do you say something's wrong here? Right. You know, right. like so, something's fishy here. I and mean, we need to. Something of just, stinks. Yep. Yeah. Instead of just placating our family and continuing to do this, like, like let's break these generational things and say, I'm not playing this game anymore. Right. You know, because and I think some they're good people. Go they're good people. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, that's the sad yeah. part. The sad part is if you were to go talk about all this stuff, not not this part, because most Mormons know this part, and they're just like, well, they got it wrong. Like, okay. Mm. The Egyptian scholars that know things got it. Mm-hmm. Okay, I got it. Joseph okay. Smith was right, and everybody else was wrong. <laughs> cool. And so, it's you know, I get that part. Yeah, maybe that. But like all the rest of it at this point, like I'm sure would have most people running for the hills just a little bit. We haven't even been talking that long, like in the scope of life. Right, okay. Right. Sure. Sure. Um, but they do. And and like all yeah. these Mormons that people know, they're just like, well, they're really good people. And the bad part is, is this is how they sneak it in and keep it. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And there's many things mm-hmm. I cannot go into today because we will be here all day. But the second anointing is something that is huge in the temple that I didn't mention. Hmm. Um, the second anointing, there is the president of the church, the prophet, and then he has two counselors, always Trinity. Then hmm. there is the quorum of the 70 apostles. And these apostles are big and anybody that makes it to that level has likely gotten the second anointing and the second anointing is like the catholics where they sold like tickets to heaven do you remember this back in the day 
And yeah. it was like for money, you could just buy your way in. And basically mm-hmm. that's what it is. And after you get the second anointing, you can do nothing wrong. Like you could molest people, mm. you could kill people, anything you do, you're still going to heaven. Well, funny enough, that's usually held now for the people that pay a lot, a lot of tithing. Because mm. this church is one of the wealthiest churches in the right. world. And that's oh, because yeah. they teach us as little dumb Mormons. It's like you're swimming and you have a baby and you're trying to swim and you have another baby and you're trying to swim and not let them drown. And then they hand you four more babies, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. And you're like, holy cow, I can't do this. But it makes you really resilient because they're like, yes, you can. And you will because you have to, because if you don't, you're not going to mm-hmm. go to heaven. You're going to go to hell and you're right, just going to be right. doomed forever and ever. And your family's going to hate you and everything. So you learn to juggle really good. And I think it made yeah. people pretty successful in the Mormon church. Maybe not all, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. like the high up people, they pay a ton of money in, in tithing. It's 10%. You can't go to the temple and do all the weird occult stuff without it. So you have to do that. Mm-hmm. And you cannot, they ask you a lot of questions like, are you morally clean? Like not having sex without uh, marriage or like you can't be cheating and stuff. So they mm-hmm. say there, I mean, my first mm-hmm. husband definitely cheated. I don't think he answered that question correctly, but whatever. It could have just been him. Do I think that problems occur? Sure. I do. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but like I said, long story short, they have like all these questions and then you can get your temple recommend. So you have to be a tithing payer and you, you can't just go in there and do whatever you want in the bowl. That's not a thing. Mm. Um, mm. You have to have exactly 10% of your income. And when I say that, I mean about this time of year, it's tithing settlement time. Um, and what that is, is after you get your W-2s, you take your W-2s to your bishop and every no. single person in the whole ward, which is like your, your congregation, um, takes mm-hmm. theirs into and he looks at it and he's like, you're short. So you need to make that up. Wow. Now. And if you didn't pay on your gross, you're also in trouble. That's not a thing. Wow. And so all of these Mormons are doing this all of the time so that they can mm-hmm. go to heaven. Cause if you don't have that, you can't, you can't go to the temple. Then you can't go to the celestial kingdom. You're not going to go to heaven. So yeah. it's all a big thing. And these top people that are in the quorum of the 70 and all this other that I'm telling you are usually pretty wealthy. Mm-hmm. And if they yeah. aren't wealthy when they get there, they're wealthy when after the fact, because right. they write yeah. books and they do speeches and blah, blah, blah. They sell their own. Yeah. Deseret book is a place where you buy just strictly Mormon, like propaganda y stuff. And mm-hmm. so if they do like, um, Uchtdorf, okay, he was a big one. He's kind of in trouble now, but whatever. He's one of the 70. <laughs> and they are Odd. like, oh, go listen to his speech about blah, 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 you know, whatever. And then mm-hmm. he writes a book. And that's how it actually ended up that we found out about Russell M. Nelson being in the skull and bones and stuff because he wrote a biography because he was in the quorum Mm -hmm. and then he became Mm -hmm. the president prophet of the church. Well, they couldn't, (laughs) it was already done. He already wrote the dumb book. So now if you want to buy the book, it's $1,200 to buy his biography. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. We'll start saving. They made sure, but you know, they're not (laughs) so smart because people scan it. I mean, come on. Yeah. I'm like, we'll okay. get around it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, they do. And it's kind of funny. But here's some more fun with the book of Abraham. Like I said, I mean, it's all completely wrong. And look, 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 Kolob. Kolob, yeah. the residence mm. of God, uh-huh. stands next yeah. to Kolob. I mean, it talks about it. So whatever. Yeah, it must, it must exist. It's oh, right there. It totally does. And to them, I mean. Do, uh-oh. do I think it does? No, no, I do not. But mm-hmm. how do I make that go away? Oh, there we go. Um, and then we're almost there. This is from a really old book. Um, actually, mm. it's this book. Right. Where to go? Um, it is called Mormons and Masons. And hmm. I, think I might have it in my my bag upstairs. But anyway, it's an old book that I found because 
all these mm. books get um tossed out because like somebody in the family bought it and then it was like important then but then they're like ooh that's anti mormon propaganda now got to get rid of that mm. so your great grandma mm. or whoever kept the book donates these and then they end up in these great bookstores in utah <laughs> Mm. which i love and like awesome i will buy that book yes i will yeah it's gotta be that's funny and so um anyway long story short this is the layout of the salt lake city temple and underneath of it what each one Mm. represents astrologically even though they say they don't do anything with astrology and you should never do it (laughs) sure wow sun and moon phases cloud stones sun stones i hope i kept that in here oh i did so currently the Salt Lake Temple, which is this one, um, pentagrams, mm-hmm. sunstones, cloud stones, moonstones, the Big Dipper, Moroni. I mean, there's no symbolism to see here, right? Wow. Yeah, it's wow. everywhere. They are covering this. Currently, they are trying to, they are redoing the temple for the umpteenth time. And they are covering this up. So I've been told. Mm. Mm. So there's too yeah. many eyes on it now, right? Yeah, That's exactly. What's up? Mm-hmm. You got to scramble. Like, okay, well, you got all those guys at the top that are making all this money, mm-hmm. and now that money is coming into question. And, and and why do we have this much money going to the church and everything like that? If you are actually a cult, and so now you got to continue to help your people that are tithing, you know, your, your quote unquote believers, you have to keep them appeased. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this type of stuff is, is not okay. So nope. you got to get rid of it as, as fast well, as possible. Well, and the fact is too, even if you get rid of it, like look at the windows, they're hilarious. Like vagina, penis, vagina, mm. penis. Like it, it goes so much deeper. Mm-hmm. And that's stuff that I don't really say too much because sure. can we prove it? No, but like, can you see it? You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. Exactly. Like, whatever. There used to be. Straight That's what up we always encourage pentagram. people is. Yeah. It's just look. You know, don't 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 dismiss it. Like, look at it. Do you see what we're seeing? And it's not it's not that we're making stuff up. It's like this fits within the scope of everything that they're doing. I mean, these guys were uh spiritual prophets as 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 they said but they also were perverts yeah right. <laughs> as they you were, said i mean it's very obvious in everything that they're doing they're they're creating some sort of a uh, sexual idolatry mm-hmm. in a way to where mm-hmm. the, the sex is the thing that's being worshiped most well, importantly and- if you get into fundamentalism, which is a whole, we, I could come back and do fundamentalism, but they yeah. use women as basically and children as currency. So when I told you about mm-hmm. my um, brother in law, when he got in trouble, he was down building. So my brother in law is Warren Jeff's nephew. So okay. also rule on Jeff's, we have to do it this way because they're all like intertangled and related. But he mm-hmm. married Rulon, who is Warren's father's granddaughter, too. So, like, a okay. double. Okay. So, he was high up. And in his um, writings, he had written down, Steed is a big popular name for fundamentalists. And he had wrote down that he was likely going to be the next prophet of the church. So, mm. they were really close and everything. And he just kind of mentioned to him, like, mm, why are the girls 12? <laughs> Like, yeah. we've yeah, like never done this before. <laughs> like, he's like, oh. back in the day when the dad was in charge, Rulon, who had passed away, he said, honestly, Heidi, I loved my life. Um, I liked it that way. It was okay. I understood about polygamy to get me to heaven, blah, blah, blah. Like, he was fully in, okay? Mm-hmm. He's like, I didn't feel bad about it at all because we were all over 18. Mm-hmm. So what? Mm-hmm. He's like, but it was still awkward because like we grew up, there's no dating. There's no love. Um, basically how he got married was they called him uh, that day and they said, Isaac, you're going to get, do you want to get married? God has told me that you are supposed to marry hmm. my granddaughter. And do you want to? Oh. And he said, uh, can I pray about it? And they said, sure, but you're getting married at 7 PM today. And so, <laughs> And he I mean, was like, really he was matter. like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to kiss a girl. Like he was fully yeah. freaking out. Mm-hmm. And his, mm-hmm. his name, Isaac's story on Amazon, I like to promote his book because very few fundamentalists will ever come out and speak about this, mm-hmm. even if they get mm-hmm. kicked out because they're afraid to go to hell. And right. so mm-hmm. he did. 
and he wrote the book and I, I fully support him. And I always am telling people go buy it. It's not that much and, and read it. What's for it yourself. called again? Isaac's story. I can send okay. you a link too. He's yeah, great, great. And, and he looks like if you, uh, I could send a picture or whatever, but he looks like Warren Jeffs, but blonde. <laughs> um, oh. He's super tall and stuff. And it's just, mm. I mean, it's weird. But he did mention to him, like, mm, I don't know, like, about these changes. Like, he didn't even say the girl. Like, he's like, the changes, which are the only changes that have been that. Right. And he's like, I was super happy in my life. And my dad had three wives growing up and we had over 30 kids. And then at some mm. point he had 13 wives. And so getting out when he got out, they took his wife. So when he got in trouble, they said, you need to go report back to Hildell, which is really close to us. It's like in Southern Utah. Mm -hmm. And then when he got there and drove there after working all day in Texas, like in the heat, everything, cause he's like, you don't own anything. Heidi. He's like, even the phone mm -hmm. I had wasn't my phone. He's mm -hmm. like, the truck wow. I was driving wasn't my truck. It, like nothing is yours. And then he's like, the stuff that is yours is like yours because you live on the, on the grounds, but like they mm. own the ground, but you can build mm. your house there, but you don't own the property. So if they want to kick yeah. your ass out, they can. And they did. Mm -hmm. He got home and his wife was gone. His kids were gone. Everything was wiped out. And they were like, you need to leave and oh. you need to go they told him you need to he wanted to still get back because he didn't know where his families were and mm -hmm. he's like you need to go get a job you need to do this you need to do that you need to put all the money to us you need to give every penny of it to the cause so he made him do all that and then they still didn't give his wife and kids back and then so somebody finally called him and it had been like a long time they kicked him out and everything they kicked out his whole family they reassign your wives and your kids mm -hmm. And they were like, hey, we saw your kids Jeez. on TV. <laughs> and then he was like, what? And they're like, yeah, they raided the Texas compound. You can look this up. And they took mm -hmm. his wife and kids away and then like gave them to other people. But they were down there. And so he was like, well, I'm going to go down there then if CPS has my kids. And they wouldn't get mm -hmm. his kids back because they had wrote oh. in the journals that he was likely going to be the next prophet. And he's like, I've been out, like I'm out. And they're like tough mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. And so he hadn't seen him at this point. I think it had been four years. Oh, um, wow. And then he finally got to see them for just a minute at the CPS. And they gave mm -hmm. him like 40 minutes with his kids. And he's like, even though I was so upset because they wouldn't get my kids back, like seeing my kids, like I was just so yeah. happy to see my kids and yeah. he's like, I got to see him for a minute. And then they gave him back to their mom. And I didn't Man. see him again for a long time. And then he finally got custody. But they tell the kids, when you go and have this, if they take you away to get back to us, do anything you can do bad. So like the girl was like really the Jeez. worst because they like to keep the girls. And he's like, mm. so she was like throwing away my sister's cell phone and like all this weird stuff and like making all kinds of problems and just like really bad stuff in their household to the point where my sister was like, I uh, literally, I can't deal with this. And they still also yeah, look cool. like little house on the prairie. Like they're really odd looking. <laughs> So, yeah, it, and they don't also believe that we are worth anything like the other people in the world. So, like, mm -hmm. um, they'll be mean to you because they don't give a crap because you're going to hell. It's kind of like the Goyam, Jeez. you know? Like, uh -huh. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And they also will do some bad things that way. So, anyway, he lost them again, and then he never got the girl back. She went back into polygamy, and he finally got his mm. sons back in their 20s. And that was it. Oh, wow. What a, what a rough time. And Man, so, that's terrible. <laughs> It, it's not an uncommon story mm. yeah. and very few people speak out and they have a lot of control and Warren Jeffs is still running the fundamentalist sect in from prison. From it's prison. Just, yeah. yeah prison. It's just yeah. like the mob, you know, like yeah. they, they don't stop. I mean, and he told people they couldn't have sex anymore or have dogs or have toys for the kids. I mean, he has all these weird rules because if he can't have a life, neither can they. And then he oh, tells Jesus. people who they can have sex with to procreate and have babies. It's like um, that show on Hulu, the the women that get pregnant. I can't remember right now. Oh, yeah, the handmaids oh, too. Yeah. Yes, that. Yeah. And so yeah. it's like that now. Basically, only the people that do everything he says can have sex. So. Wow. Man. And it could be somebody else's wife. Yeah. Yeah. 
So there's that. Well, Heidi, we're so, we're so grateful for you coming yeah. on. I know that there's yeah. so much more to go oh over, and and we'd love to have you on again yeah, if you're course. up for it. For sure. Because this has just been such a great conversation, and knowing that that you know if if anybody's on the fence about Mormonism, hopefully at this point they'll know. Like the, we're not trying to say this stuff to hurt people's feelings no. or to break people down. We're talking about the systems that were set up at the very beginning and, and how those systems have come through time. And, and those are the problems, right? Yes. The, 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 the way that these systems work is the problem. Mm -hmm. And God would never do that to mm -hmm. us. He would never, he would never ask young girls to be in these relationships. With he would never men. ask people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. And to go through these different ceremonies ceremonies and things like that. I mean, these are very occult practices. And if hopefully if people haven't gotten into the occult, at least you'll know now that that uh, Heidi has looked into this <laughs> stuff and she's made these connections mm -hmm. and God's put her in this place for a reason. In my opinion, we know that God can use us to do these things. And, and when you're scared, the fear is the problem, right? The fear is the thing that keeps us from speaking out, that keeps us mm -hmm. from saying saving these people from these institutions, these, these ways of, because we're too afraid of what's going to happen to us. And that's right. not what Jesus calls us to do. He doesn't ask us to be concerned about ourselves. He asks no. us to be concerned about the widows and the orphans and those that are, you know, having a hard time in the world. And I would say that those that are stuck in fundamentalism, Mormonism, or even in Mormonism as a whole, um, these are the people that we should be talking to and reaching out to and saying, listen, there's, there's more to life than this. Mm -hmm. There's so much more to life. So thanks again, yeah, Heidi. It's been course. so awesome talking to you. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, Jesus is best of luck. not a religion. Jesus, yeah, Jesus yes. is just you and the Bible. And that's all. Yes. <laughs> yep. Figure out yeah. that and you'll feel mm -hmm. way better, I promise. Because it was that's heavy. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yeah. my yeah. podcast is Unfiltered Rise. Um, I'm pretty much anywhere podcasts are served. I do have the extra mm -hmm. one on Patreon because I try not to cut my episodes and do it that way instead. Like to yeah. give extras. Yeah. Uh huh. And so, and you have YouTube that people yeah. can go watch some of this stuff. Too. Yes. And so that way yeah. I feel like, because this is really God's word, like this is not, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. would have never chose this for my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. this is uncomfortable. And I still live in Utah. Sure. All my family's still in. Like, yeah. but at the end of the day, like at some point in your life, like if you get challenged with something, it could not be Mormonism, it could be something else. Mm -hmm. But right mm -hmm. is right. And wrong is wrong. Yes. And you have yes. to find out where you're going to draw a line because if not, each one of us could be at risk with the coming mm -hmm. of the end times and the yep. brown mm -hmm. shirts like in Nazi Germany and look that up like different things. Yeah. Like you don't want to be one that just stands by the side because it didn't affect you that day. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You just exactly. need to find yeah. some things out. And people say, oh, it's not a cult because it's mainstream religion bet. Mm, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's a perfect place to end. And I think you, uh, I think you hit it on the head. We have to do our own research. Yeah. We have to look into this stuff and we have to just have open minds. Yes. And I promise you, if you guys have an open mind and you look into this stuff, you'll find the truth because yeah. God wants you to find the truth. And so with that, we're going to let you go, Heidi. Perfect. Thank you so much yes. again for coming on. This is been such a great conversation and, <laughs> Sorry, and uh, we're going to get out of here for now <laughs> yeah, no it's perfect it. yeah thank you yeah. again for having me yes oh, of course you. so great to have you and for all of you that are listening thank you. Yes. Thank you. for all of you that are listening we've got so much more coming up with all of these other um heavy religion talks and things like that it's very important and i hope you guys are excited about it as much as we are so with that we're going to get out of here we are that so fringy Bye. podcast and we will see you guys on the next one Bye. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>